8.44. The Radio Waymo Breakfast. Kiwi. Kiwi. All right, now to um, across to uh, Dylan's story for Dylan Stories Astronomy today. G'day there to you, Dylan. Good morning, Waymo. Of course, Dylan Story, um, musician, but also a fanatic about space and uh, everything that, um, that goes along with space, including Dylan's story, uh, this meteor that is screaming towards Earth right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, hang on, hang on. It, it, <laughs> or not yes, quite. That, uh, that, that meteor. No, it's, it's actually it's a meteor shower. Oh, okay, so, all right. So this, um, yeah, subtle distinction there. <laughs> um, meteor shower is, is um, thousands or millions of tiny little particles which are in a certain area of space. So when the Earth passes through them, they all they all fall into Earth for want of, want of a better word. And something the grain size of a grain of sand when it's falling into the atmosphere, that the speeds it generates by Earth's gravity pulling it in so fast, um, is causes it to burn up with the heat of friction. Yeah. And it gets so hot in such a short amount of time that you know something that small will be seen as a great streak of light across the sky. And um, and you're saying that, that these are tiny particles, so we're not talking about rocks here at all. No, we're talking about grain grain of sand type size things. Sometimes bigger. Sometimes you get something maybe the size of your fist that'll make a really bright, that'll make an extremely bright streak across the sky. And what's what's so special about this particular meteor uh, shower? Are we? Are, I mean, does this come around quite often? Yep, comes around every year. It's called the the Perseids. So they're in the constellation. They, they appear to be coming from the constellation Perseus, and they're one of the it's one of the brightest meteor showers that are out there. Um, unfortunately, it's not in New Zealand. We're not in a particularly good place for viewing it because the constellation Perseus is in the northern hemisphere. So it's it's actually going to be low on the northern sky, low on the northern horizon in the in the small hours of the morning. Mm. Okay. Whereas yeah. if you're in the in the, in the northern hemisphere, it'd be in the in the evening sky, and it'd be quite high in the sky. But we still should be able to see it if anyone wants to get up. Actually, the the um, the peak of it would have just been a few hours ago, but we might get a few tonight as well. Okay, cool. And uh, well, that's if that's the weather uh, is good enough. It's not not looking very good over the country this weekend. But I tell you what, I mean, no, it, but you never know. It's true. Um, you can be lucky at any time, of course, to see um, one of these specks hits the atmosphere. Um, I was um, up north last week on, on holiday and um, good to be out of the city and and walk outside and go, oh, wow, hang on. Oh, that's right. There's stars out there. <laughs> Which yeah, yeah. Can't see. Awesome. And I was fortunate yeah. enough to see one um, uh, falling star, as they as we like to call them as well, the shooting star. Um, it's well, cool, eh? They're just cool to see. And, and you're, but, yeah, I mean, and, that, and you're at any time, you're you, up. I'll just say, you always end up with someone... Who um who doesn't see it? <laughs> and you go, oh, you yeah, missed yeah. it! <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, out of, out of a group of five people, four will see it, and someone won't. Eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but now, they, they come around every year because um they're actually they're actually the trails of comets that have gone past before. Right. So and they leave sort of all this debris there. So when the Earth passes through that area of space, that's when we get bombarded by tiny particles. Hmm. I saw a great way um, astronomy show on TVNZ7 the other night um, talking about a uh, the great the greatest meteor shower that, um, in our solar system that occurred um, many of course millions of years ago um, and that created all the um, the 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 marks you see on the moon and also um, the big um, uh, uh, crater out in the Arizona desert as well. It was caused apparently by one of the planets hitting the outer edge of our solar system and colliding with a big kind of meteor belt and then, like, firing them all off around our, our oh, solar right. system. Yeah. I haven't, Fasc- I haven't seen that. Fascinating. Absolutely I fascinating. Should, I should get a TV. <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> um, the planetary conjunction uh, or planetary alignment is still in, yeah. in effect at the moment, Dylan. Yeah, in fact, in fact, tonight is probably the best night to see it. So that's um, that's what... The observatory have been getting a lot of calls about, and the um, at the eight o'clock show at the Stardome, they'll be covering a lot about what that's all about. But um, basically, you can see it; it's it's very easy. You can just you just go outside after dark, look towards the west in the direction the sun set, and um, you'll see a very bright thing, and you'll see two other 
slightly less bright things beside it. And um, so that the bright one is Venus. The other two are Mars and Saturn. Hmm. You can tell by their, their red and yellow coloration. Um, and tonight particularly is special because the crescent moon will be in line. So it, it'll, it'll be right, right by them. So okay. you have, you'll have the moon, Venus, Saturn, and Mars all there within about um, a, a fist size of space, a fist at arm's length. A, a, so that, a planetary combo. Yes, a conjunction and alignment. And and Mercury is visible too. It's just a little bit, um, it's, it's a little bit down below them. Okay, cool. So there's a well, there's a there's a whole lot to see there, just in that, and as you say, in that fistful of the sky. Hey, finally, I just want to touch yeah. on on a um a piece of news come out this week about the moon and about the uh, the very core of the moon. What what can you tell us about this, Dylan? Um, well, there was thought that perhaps there could be water in the core of the moon, locked up in these um, little crystals, little glass-type crystals. That um, so they were thought when the moon formed, there might have been uh, some some water about, and it would have been locked up in the in the minerals. But the latest research says that that's not the case. The, the, the core of the moon is actually dry. But we do know, as of about I think it was almost a year ago. Um, that there is water in some places on the surface of the moon, and it, it was postulated. But when the Apollo astronauts went to the moon about 40 years ago, they found it completely dry, and the samples they took back completely dry of water. The reason is because there's no there's no air on the moon, so there's no air pressure, so there's no there's no pressure at all to keep the water in a liquid or solid form. Because huh. when you when you've got really low pressure, water water will boil at really low temperatures. Whereas on Earth, the pre- pressure on Earth, it needs 100 degrees to boil. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the moon around, the, the Apollo missions all went around the equatorial regions or not far from the equator. So places that the sun gets, so anywhere that the sun gets, no water's going to stand a chance. It's just going to get um, evaporated off by the sun. But right. the mission last year was to go to the polar regions where you'll get craters which never see the sun because they're, they're sort of, like on top or, or b- bottom of the moon, so inside their walls are areas, so there's sort of rare areas in the whole solar system that never ever get sunshine on them. And it was thought, well, if there was any water when the moon was formed, then this is where they would be. So they they crashed a huge projectile into it, and then they took photos of the plume that erupted up off it. Oh, yes, I remember that. And and found um. And did find traces of water. So that's very interesting. It's very interesting if um, if man's ever going to go to the moon, that there is a source of water there that we could and it, uh, t- tap and then take with us to Mars. Perhaps, yeah, because um, yeah, the the main sort of expense and difficulty is getting these things off Earth, getting getting the weight off Earth. So anything you can get off, anything you can source off Earth, is going to greatly reduce the cost of getting to Mars. Mm. So, yeah, that's very important. Mm. Fascinating stuff. Well, um, if people want to get um, active in astronomy this weekend, then head to the Sardome Observatory um, and check out the Planetary Conjunction, uh, learn a whole lot more about that. And, Dylan, I cannot wait for the next fortnight to zoom on by uh, in light in, in light year, no, hyperdrive time or something light, like that. Light speed, light yes, speed, hyper, that's, that's, hyper speed. <laughs> so that we can talk astronomy once again. Thanks so much. Yes, likewise, and um, starthome.org.nz for more information on that stuff. Choice. And see you in a fortnight.